Gentlemen, if you are watching this video, it is because previously stable levels of PUTIS have been found to be rising unsustainably. There is only one course of action. That is to watch PUTIS engage extreme. Viewer discretion is probably advised. This is how it feels every time I select heavy, moments before I am stabbed in the back by a spy because my entire team has left me because I'm so incredibly slow. <laughs> is this a bad translation? Is this like one of those bad lip reading translations? Because, uh, what? Rename your thighs to the Gaza Strip? Dude, I'm, all right, I'm already loving it. I mean, the only way I can think, is it some sort of reference to, like, bombings? Like, your thighs are, are powerful? Or, like, bomb somehow? The Gaza Strip is... Okay, the Gaza Strip is a region in Palestine that is hotly contested. Israel claims it, occupies it. It's very, very politicized. Um, but it is primarily, the residents are primarily Palestinian. And when there are military actions by the Israeli military against um, Hamas and other Palestinian uh, organizations, the Gaza Strip is usually ground zero for that fighting. I'm trying to discern any meaning from these, but I think this is an exercise in futility. These lyrics are are seem to be a reference to every anime opening ever. That's just utter preposterous nonsense. And the fact that Sina was like, "Yes, I will either find and license uh, music that is utter nonsense, or I will literally commission it," which I really is what I I really hope that he did. I hope he literally commissioned his own crazy anime opening song. Produced at Human Resources 2022. Uh, guys, I got to say, Human Resources is one of my all-time favorite corporate doublespeak terms. And that's because, of course, Human Resources is a term that normally refers to, well, managing human beings the same way you manage uh, boxes of inventory or raw material inputs. The other times they sometimes refer to it now as human capital, and the terms are supposed to be different, though they're used interchangeably thanks to our friends with their corporate doublespeak. Uh, but normally, human resources refers to literally the labor inputs, right? So your uh, your shelf stockers, your cashiers, jobs that you could train, not anybody to do, but you could train the majority of workers in the American economy. You could train them to do it with relatively, you know, in a matter of days or weeks. In contrast, you have human capital. Human capital, right, under modern economic theory, refers to specialized production facilities. So a factory in the land, it's a factory is considered capital, right? So human capital is human beings who have such a unique and proprietary set of skills that they are treated more like a factory that can make a product or they're treated like a software program or an AI, right? Something that is very valuable and essential to the production of your finished good. So the idea, the reason people say, hey, you should go to college or you should develop a trade is that you want to be as le less like human resources or labor is how it's referred to in modern economic theory. And you want to be more like human capital, right? And the, the idea is that the more skills you acquire, the more unique value you bring, the more that the economy and your employer has to treat you like you are capital, right? Just like you're not going to work a factory until it burns to the ground, right? You're going to you're going to make the treat that factory in a way 
that it's optimized or your machines in the factory, right? You're going to keep them oiled. You're going to keep them maintained. You're only going to run them in accordance with the manufacturer's direction, right? You're going to do preventative maintenance. Those are all the things that human capital type employees are treated as. And that's why you see like Facebook will sit there and be like, you have unlimited vacation. You can work from anywhere. Uh, you know, you, you can get free food at the employee cafeteria. Your health care is like gold plated. Right. And that's all because those employees are so high level, those Google, Facebook, uh, Netflix type employees. They're so valuable because of their knowledge and expertise that they have to get treated like a ultra precise well an ultra precise like manufacturing equipment and instead of being treated like a janitor which is just work more hours until you break them off like a where an amazon warehouse employee is a great example amazon doesn't care if it's employees if it's warehouse workers get injured or broken or burnt out that's the point the because they're so totally replaceable you could just grind them into the dirt and you expect them to only last six months on the job right before they get burned out and go to something else but you know because it's human capital you can bring the next person in and in two weeks they'll be just as proficient as the person you ground into the dirt so it is an absolute terror to be human resources. Somebody help me collect extra sick ass. I'm coming for you. <laughs> this is like this is like the worst PTSD dream. Like I could imagine if you like dropped acid and then fell asleep and had your I had my PTSD triggered. Those are the sort of things I would see. Wait, uh, does he have the right number of fingers? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, we're in fact slightly, uh, it's one too many fingers here. Idea. Well, that's what happens. You see, mutations seem like a fun thing in your favorite Marvel superhero movies, but the truth is that usually if you experience uh, mutations, especially as an adult, very rapidly onset type mutations, it's a sign of usually a very serious infection, illness, or cancer, right? The classic one is very severe cases of HPV will actually create warts or wart-like structures on the skin and hands, and they can be very very disfiguring and very frightening if left untreated. Well, I think they are here. But can you even read? Yes, I can. Not sure. You are not helping. Ah, fuck you. I am trying. I don't know what this is, but I really want to appreciate this person is holding this M4, right? It looks like an M4 carbine with no Picatinny rails, but it does have a 20 round magazine. You can see it's got the straight magazine. 30 round mags have a little bit of curvature to them because obviously the bullet end is small and the primer end is large and to fit them all in, you got to curve the magazine. Uh, he also doesn't have any aftermarket optic, but it looks like this rail is sort of supposed to be screwed on. So it may be like a it may be able to be removed and then you can install an optic. So it makes me think that maybe this is someone who is not necessarily a frontline security guard. He may be some sort of rear echelon person. He may be someone who normally is equipped with like a pistol and only in emergencies are he authorized to go into the arms room and get out uh, an M4. But either way, it appears to be someone who has reason to be afraid. Whoa, there was a Robin Seek reference back here. Back it up, back it up, back it up. There he is. Yes, the Fallen Shrek. If you guys haven't seen the Fallen Shrek, boy howdy, they are right up there with Pudis Extreme in terms of its ab absurdity. I actually might do a reaction because I really, really, really enjoyed uh, his gangster SpongeBob movies, videos, things. Go! 
Oh man. You just gotta walk away as soon as you just the door's already open. Just sl walk slowly back. Now, stick it. Where is the money? Look, I should. That is it. It is him. Look! I have sex. Huh. Ah, good old video game physics, right? The ragdoll physics looks cool until it doesn't. Do you think this is where they keep the money? What? Sapphire Burkhouse. Tactically, it's a really bad idea to leave a hostel into your back. And that is, of course, because you need to focus your firepower on the front. And it's uh, takes a lot more personnel. You have to think if these heavies, for example, had to both watch their front and rear areas, they would lose 50% of their combat power because obviously one would face forward, one would face back. The math is true in larger formations as well. If you can place even a marginal or unlikely threat to the enemy's rear, they have to devote a significant portion of their combat power to thwarting that, deterring it, uh, or detecting and destroying that. It can slow down an offensive uh, it can absolutely reduce the enemy's combat power way out of proportion to the actual number of forces in the rear area. That's why it's so essential that f that any ground force secures its front lines, secures its areas, and it's why it's so incredibly hard to fight insurgencies. The Taliban, because they, they weren't that numerically, well, numerous, but because they were a persistent threat everywhere, it meant that there was only a tiny number of areas in which U.S. forces did not have to assume a tremendously high security posture. And over 20 years, that costs literally trillions and trillions of dollars to maintain that. Access denied. Please validate that you are human. Bus, bus, bus. Bus is good. <laughs> this is not how capture works. Thanks. Whoa. Mmm, just clipping right through the door. Wow, they took some tips from Tarkov hackers. Whoa. And from the TF2 bots. Hey, buddy, you picked the wrong door. The weed club's two blocks down. Two blocks? Very good! Yes! Thanks! King! We go! Now I'll show you who's boss of this facility. Just want to point out, there's an anime girl right here. Right there in the back. Surreptitiously watching. But for what end? Where did he go? Okay, there's one thing I want to point out here, and it's one of the video game tropes that bothers me the absolute most, is that if you have, when you're fighting someone, you have to use what's called mass. Mass means putting not a lot of your forces, but a lot of your combat power at a single decisive point. This is, of course, stretching all the way back to, I mean, as long as military forces have existed. But that's because if you want to defeat an enemy cleanly and simply, the best way to do so is to throw the maximum amount of firepower at them and overwhelm them and crush them, right? Instead, what they appear to have done is kept maybe one of their strongest champions in a deep, 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 deep reserve. The problem is, imagine how much more decisive the facility defenses would have been able to be against the heavies if they had the entire facility defense at the perimeter plus this super jacked super soldier. Ah! 
to T-Pose. Okay, that's actually a, a legit move in, like, uh, Mexican professional wrestling in Lucha Libre, which is its own pretty wild tradition of professional wrestling. It's very athletic and acrobatic, and that's a classic move right out of that. I don't know its name off the top of my head, though. Let me know in the comments if you know this. See, this is a man who you can tell is some sort of human or human capital, right? He's on break, and he knows that his bosses will not care that he did not come off his break to defend this other person from fighting, right? Human capital gets treated well. Human resources gets used as cannon fodder. Yeah! He's also reading anime. That's, wait, 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 let's back it up. Let's break down this rear naked choke. Okay, we're backing it up. Boom. This is a properly applied rear naked choke. In fact, a lot of these details are correct. The elbow is, or the um, choking hand is secured behind the elbow and additional leverage is being applied with the hand. The non-choking hand is on the back of the crown. This is exactly where that wants to be to maximize the amount of pressure on the carotid arteries because if you can apply sufficient pressure to the carotid arteries it'll drop the blood pressure in the skull and it will instinctively set the brain into unconscious mode to conserve energy just a few seconds is all it takes the problem is of course that you need to make sure that you stay behind your opponent and without uh, what, what in jiu-jitsu is called hooks in or your feet resting sort of around their waist or on their thighs, you're not able to ensure that your opponent stays stationary long enough for you to choke these two carotids. They can turn their head to the left or right and relieve some of the pressure. If you're strong enough and you hold it and you put it on tight enough, it's not a factor, but it's really, really a good idea to have those hooks in. You are going down, you spudnik! What? That was a suplex, also properly executed. What's cool about the suplex, what I think is so cool, is that it's a professional wrestling move, to be sure. All right, let's back it up and watch the suplex happen here. It's a professional wrestling move, to be sure, because it looks pretty sick. But it's also a move in Olympic freestyle wrestling. It's a move in Greco-Roman wrestling. It's even a move in mixed martial arts, right? It, you getting suplexed is a devastating throw, but it's highly technical, as you can see. And this is actually, again, animated pretty much properly. The thrower's head is tucked so that the uh, th thrower, right, is going to have their head potentially spike on the ground. Normally, there's you're required to have what's called an arc, so you'll arc your opponent over and turn them slightly so their head doesn't spike quite so badly, but that your head is protected and you arch your back and throw them up over your shoulder using your hip movement to generate the power to throw them up and over. It's a, it's a, It's an awesome move with a ton of power and it can be devastating if you hit it. Why they're on a train in front of a giant stuffed anime person or inflatable anime girl? I've I've learned that girl is a loose term in anime. Uh, I don't understand. Oh, there's a Trade Federation ship, United States of Bacon, uh, on the space shuttle Gamer. The U.S. actually, I think, retired their space shuttle program. I don't, I don't think we send, uh, we don't send astronauts up in space shuttles anymore. We just use the reusable capsules.
So in space, there's no atmosphere, so there won't be any of those wind shear type effects from being pushed. Instead, you'll hit them and you will have some sort of, of um, momentum shift. But once you've reached your uh, once you've reached your velocity, the same velocity as the object that hits you, it will feel just like riding inside of a car, right? You initially accelerate, you feel yourself push into the seat, but then once you're up to speed, you feel just like your frame of reference feels like it's still. So that engineer, unless of course those heavies are accelerating at a great, even greater than gravity, right? Then they may feel like they're pinned continuously, but without a constant acceleration, which for the record takes a lot of energy, you would probably just eventually in space feel like your frame of reference wasn't moving at all. You know, one of the things I think we deserve to acknowledge is the fact that the U.S. in 1969, in 1969, 70 years ago, put men on the moon and brought them home. No other country, despite 70 years of technological advancement, has been able to do that. And believe me, if China or Russia could, they absolutely would. But even the U.S.'s willingness to throw money at the space program in the 70s is absolute, or in the 60s, was absolutely unbelievable. That's one small step for man. <laughs> the ragdoll physics. <laughs> This is interesting. What we're seeing here is obviously a comedy version of what's called MIRVs or multiple independent reentry vehicles. This is actually from ICBM technology, nuclear, uh, often nuclear, intercontinental ballistic missiles. What they do is they fly up into low orbit and as they descend right onto their target in order to counter any potential anti-ballistic missile systems and to increase the effectiveness of a single rocket, those warheads split apart and each of those independent reentry vehicles, right, each with their own nuclear payload will disperse and either go to their independent targets or take independent routes to the same target. That increases the chances that the targets facility, uh, city, whatever, will be destroyed, and it makes it much harder to counter. It also increases the payload of some of these weapons while still complying to the letter of many anti-ballistic missile treaties, which sort of cap the size and punch of a single warhead. It also means that even if, let's say, instead of having one all-in warhead where if there's one mechanical failure it just doesn't detonate you now have six or seven warheads and if one or even two don't detonate it's not a big deal because you're still going to achieve uh, more than one nuclear strike yep and that's how it would look yep multiple mervs hitting and detonating they'll actually detonate at about five thousand feet they found that that the uh, detonating a few uh, hundred feet or a few thousand feet above your target is actually going to be the most devastating option vineboom.mp3 nice Wait, 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 this is a Frank Sinatra cover? Okay, things are getting weirder. I didn't think it was possible, yet here we are, weirder than we were. 
this will probably get me demonetized. The sandwich healing mechanic is no joke. If you guys have seen my Team Fortress 2 streams, you know that I rely heavily on that sandwich to stay alive in sticky situations. Ah, but now the sandwich is gone. Mm. It is yeah. sad day! Indeed. Ah! Ah, Metal Gear yeah, Solid no, 3 like reference, that. yeah, true patriot. I had it with these motherfucking weebs on this motherfucking military base. Oh, uh, I got some bad news about the Air Force for you, friend. They're all weebs. Top 10 most intensifying anime deaths. I <laughs> love it. I oh, love the Soy Jack references. They never get old. <laughs> what? No! Sex man. Ah, T42 heavy weapons guy. You may not go any further. Alright, this guy is. Creepy. I know he's G-Man from Half-Life, but still give me the creeps. My employers have grown rather fond of their anime girls. And, well... Uh, We've talked about this in the Uncanny Valley. Right? G-Man is designed to firmly affix that. He looks human-like, but his the differences between him and a regular human being are sufficiently... Um, unnerving that human beings will find him frightening and uncomfortable. Wait. Shout out to the QR code. Very nice. 69420. Is it even is it even a is it even a video? Is it even a Sino video without some 69420 reference? Yes! I see them! This camera angle is shit! What? Okay, I love how Sino is a soldier, cat girl, f not really a femboy. NB, maybe? Ah! I need you to take me that camera angle. Okay! This is pretty great. Okay, I just want to point out he's got some random package that's his second monitor. It's a trap. I can feel it. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this, uh, what's his name? Coach from, um, uh, like, Left 4 Dead? Ah! Ending B. Coach Left 4 Dead 2. Got it. Wait, is this, is this, is this just the credits? So, ending 1, they die. Ending 2, they, they don't. I, I've been bamboozled by Sino before, so... 
I love how this is all just memes from the Discord. This is actually a great ending. If I ever make like some sort of epic video, this is what I will do at the end. Just, just the patrons and then just random Discord memes. This is a lot. Okay, this is a lot of patrons. Okay, all right, here we go. post credit scene, baby. Gotta scan the QR code, dude. What? <laughs> Gross. All right, well, I appreciate that ending. Uh, good to see that there is a good ending if you're just able to unlock it. Um, boy, a little gross, though. little gross. Gonna, gonna just be honest with you guys. But nonetheless, that was still pretty good. Um, oh, God, what have I done? I did something. Yeah, so anyway, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Also, thanks to the Lieutenant Tier patrons. Uh, if you enjoy this content, you should become a member on Patreon. Uh, get access to the exclusive room on the Discord. Get access to some exclusive content. And, of course, you get a shout-out in the video. Shout-out to Cole Foster, Caffeinated, Chris Command Unit, and Jakob Flavius. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.